In this video, we go over 10 things you need to know about Azure Availability Zones. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraldos. In this video, we cover some important things to know about Availability Zones. You may think you know all there is to know about Availability Zones. Keep watching to find out. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and sign up for my mailing list. The link to that and some great courses are below. And a shout out to those who have become members of this channel, thank you. Back to it, my last video went over two common mistakes when deploying availability sets and availability zones. We didn't get too deep into availability zones in that video because there's a lot to cover. I thought it would be helpful for me and maybe you as well to dig a little deeper into availability zones. Let's get a quick recap of our availability options. We have availability sets. These spread the resources across fault and update domains but all resources go to the same data center in a region. We can use availability zones instead of availability sets to distribute deployments across data centers in a region. Each region that supports availability zones have at least three well-connected data centers. Let's make that the first thing to know. Availability zones exist within the same region, but each zone is in a separate data center. These data centers are separated by about 300 miles, and that can depend on the geography. They're connected with private high-speed networks, and there's less than two milliseconds of round-trip time latency between them. Number two is that not every region supports availability zones. The list is growing as Azure adds more data centers, but not all regions are supported. I'll leave a link below to supported regions. While you're down there checking that out, sign up for my newsletter. That leads me to the next point. What if we deploy to a region that doesn't have availability zones? It is possible to move a resource to a different region that supports availability zones. Use Azure Resource Mover or even Azure Site Recovery to move computers to regions that support availability zones. And on to another point with number four, we can move resources to another region that supports availability zones, but you can't add a VM to a zone once it's deployed. VMs can be moved to availability zones, but it requires removing and recreating the VM and does cause some downtime. Next, we can think of each zone in an availability zone as its own fault and update domain. The data center is the fault domain and updates will take place with one zone at a time. Number six is everyone's favorite topic, cost. Availability sets are free and so are availability zones, kind of. Per the Microsoft docs, there will be a fee to transfer data between zones within a region starting July of 2023. At the time of this recording, the price documentation lists the cost as one cent per gig egress and ingress. Next, there are two ways to use availability zones. First, some resources are deployed directly to a zone. This is what we would do if we're deploying a new VM. We have to select or pin the resource to a specific zone in the region. These are called zonal services. Zonal services support availability zones, but we manually select what zone the service is deployed to. Zone redundant services, on the other hand, will automatically distribute services across the zones. Scale sets, app services, and Azure Virtual Desktop are just a couple of examples of zone redundant services. The next thing you should know about availability zones and availability sets for that matter is that they're bound to a single region. If you're deploying an application that's critical to business, you should also consider using services like Traffic Manager or front door to distribute workloads across regions. On to number nine. This one is a repeat of my last video, but I think it's important. Know the SLA for the services you deploy. The VM SLA for an availability zone guarantees 99.99% availability to at least one instance deployed to availability zones. That's not 99.99% availability to all instances. It's 99.99% to at least one instance deployed to availability zones. And finally, with number 10, use availability zones when able, or at least use availability sets if zones aren't available. Even if you're deploying a single resource, adding it to an availability zone or set won't hurt anything, and it will future-proof the deployment so you don't have to move or redeploy in the future. That's 10 things to know about availability zones. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.